What is going on, people of YouTube? My name is Kurt Yo, and I started very dully there, but this is, well, it's currently the middle of the most boring part of the year, the international break. And I did, wanted to do a video on this. I actually began to record a video, six minutes of it, until I realised it was the international break, and that I was doing it a week early. Yeah, I didn't go too well. But, I wanted to release a video on this, so I've decided to just give some generic pointers and some generic tips and tricks. As we've got no game, the stuff I would look for in the players so far, because we've had a few games, three games, and now it's time to review those three games and look at where maybe you could improve, where maybe you could um, maybe change things, I suppose. and maybe you could consider using your wild card because now would be the time because you're going to have internationals maybe a few injuries but I'm going to give you a few pointers now looking here I have I'd say a decent all-round team one thing if you've got him Eric Deer get rid of him he had two good games it won't go any further than that and I guarantee you that I usually say things that like Maybe I'll, I'll hope something like that happens, but that one, he may have a few go um, good games, may score a few more goals, he will not be a player to consistently get 15 points a game. You saw that, he got 15, then 14, then 1 against Liverpool, and that's against a really good, strong team. West Ham and QPR are not the strongest of teams. Liverpool are good, how do anything there. But, I would... It's only 5.4 if you have, say, because uh, I've got Coleman, Terry, Ivanovic, Cahill and Koscielny, if you had just four of them in your team, it'd be one to keep on there because he's a very good finisher from his first two goals and um, maybe you might get a few more points, but I'd say don't. I'd risk, I'd put it on someone that is going to be more consistent or a defend, maybe a defender that doesn't have play for the best team a defender that will do a lot like tackling wise. I was someone like Shawcross, um, Ron Blas a good one. Another one is um, Alan Hutton, the Villa as well. He's also one that I'd put on my team if I had any transfers left, but I don't. Um, as far as goalkeepers are concerned, I've always said what I need to say. Two goalkeepers that are going to save a lot, batting out of competition. Moving on, um, another generic pointer would be um, Go for players that attack, because you can get players that defend quite well, but doing a good job in the defence, if you unless you're a defender, isn't <coughs> sorry, isn't going to benefit your team. Now one of those best examples is Nemanja Matic. He got 12 points in one game. He's currently on 17, but he got bonus points and assist and a goal scored he is not going to be doing that every game he is a holding midfielder that does the job of like a Matthew Flamini of John Obi Mikel those sorts of players and holding roles on this got two and he got three for a clean sheet one point for a clean sheet for a holding midfielder I'd say I'd struggle to put him up to make 100 this season Although a couple of forms is like that and he'll get up there. But if he plays consistently like he does, doesn't score all season, I'd say it would be I'd be surprised if he got to one hundred. But then I think he's bound to score because he's got a strike on him and he'll also get assists. So it's it's just a risk that I was willing to take, but until I found out that you don't get many points for the defending attributes, so well I didn't. Now another one is Look at all my five midfield players. They are all pretty much a midfielder that can get forward and get forward well. Because, like I said, holding midfielders, there's no place for them in um, this sort of um, thing. And with Silva and Sigurdsson, I've got two, I'd say two of one of, or probably the best playmakers. Um, not the like first and second, but I'd say put them both in the top five of being the best playmakers in the league. You've got Valencia and Dyer who do their job brilliantly. 
just getting down the wing and getting balls in. Valencia, I feel like, just needs a bit more support and needs to just stop doing the same thing over and over again. He's another one. But, clean sheet. It's a risk, and he's more of someone to put um, on from my bench. He will probably be the bench former of the team for that the whole thing. And also, Henderson. Every team in this, I feel like, needs to have one box-to-box -box midfielder. And that's what you've got to go for. And my upfront three strikers, I don't think I'd um, mention anything except they've got to get goals and they've got to get assists. And I think Lukaku, Naismith and Rooney, three great examples of that. Now, away from positions, you also got to look at the clubs they are playing for. For example, I would point out a club like Spurs, who are in the Europa League. Oh, that's not Spurs, sorry, and that's Sigurdsson. But a club like Spurs, like Hull, like Liverpool, like Man United, no, I ain't no Man United aren't in there. Um, like, <laughs> like Everton, Chelsea, City, Arsenal, all those teams, they're going to be playing one game in the weekend, then a game in midweek. That will knacker out some players. And that's something you've always got to watch out for. I wouldn't fill your team up with players that are in Europe because if they get knackered and the, trust me at the one point maybe they will they'll pick up a knock and then they won't be ready for the match at the weekend that's gonna be the downfall because you might have four players or more injured and that means you have to go into your points on the field and take it away from that and that is bad and considering you only have three strikers one or two of them gets injured you're left with one striker formation you're forced to play five at the back or five in the mid if there's no other injuries. So look out for that. I'll say definitely, if you're gonna be spending a lot of money, look at Manchester United because I feel like they will make a rise this season. It just you just gotta give them like a little bit of time. That has got ten points. Not bad I suppose. But, um you just got to give them time. And I like the way how I removed Jones from my team and he well and it was only in one game but um you just, you just got to give them time because they've got Rooney and Van Persie up front as well as Falcao and 11 million, I've only just seen this 11 million for Falcao white face <laughs> um, it's a bargain but I think the reason it's a bargain is because you've got Rooney, Van Persie and Falcao three brilliant forwards one of which maybe will be moved out of the team I won't see, I think it will be Rooney moving back but they've got, I think they've got problems. Um, I wouldn't put blind, just quite simply because he's a defender and I feel like he's going to be playing more in the defence and um, that'll um, also won't be the best of moves. And also Di Maria, he will tear the Premier League apart, I think, and that is definitely something you've got to look out for. But overall, it is completely your choice. I'm not going to try and tell you who you should have and who you shouldn't have but I would just say look at who they are playing and look at what teams they play for because I wouldn't stick a load of people from Europe on my team and for me I don't think I've done that as much as maybe I could have because I've only got one City player, I've got no Spurs players, I've only got one Liverpool player and if I've got all of those, I could easily make a full European team with probably, what well, some people might say, the best players in the league that could pick up a few knocks and could be out for a few games, if not a little while longer. You've seen it with Giroud. Arsenal now have to rely on Mr. Welbeck. Let's just get him up, probably. How much is he? 6.9 million. Blimey, that's a bargain. But yeah, there we go. Um, that is the end of this episode. Welbeck, I would actually put in your team because he is... Well, let's look at it. You've got Sonogo, Welbeck, Podolski, Campbell and Akpom. Akpom is not going to get a game, let's put it that way. Sonogo, now I'd be surprised if you got a game along with Campbell. That leaves you Welbeck and Podolski. And Podolski, I think will get played behind Welbeck, so Welbeck's definitely one, but that is it for this episode, I just wanted to get one out there, just so it didn't really stop the flow of things, just generic pointers and helpful hints that I hope will help you push on 
and um, well, win your Fentacle League, maybe win it overall from using my tactics. If so, I, uh, I want half the prize money. I'm, I'm being, I'm, I'm being, being serious here. Um, thank you for watching. If you like the video, leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe if you feel like I'm worthy, and I'll catch you all in the next episode, which will be an actual game. Bye bye.